Hey guys, welcome back to the D2 Live. It's good to be back in the host chair. It was a tough watch at times, watching Iffy fumble his <laughs> way around the, the schedule, but uh, there's no guarantees because it was hey, a jam pack. You have a day off and you're begging me. Hey, right, hey, right. No, yeah. I thought you did a good job. You did a great job. It was a great show. <laughs> Chapeau. Uh, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. And thanks again for supporting the channel, youtube.com forward slash the D2 podcast. Like, share, subscribe. Joined, as always, by four-time national road champion Johnny Chavarro, the voice of cycling, Phil Liggett, and the sheriff, Neil Stevens from Bahrain, Victoria. So look at him. Looks like a Cheshire cat. He's got a great idea to be on you, sheriff. The old centre bloke up the road, drop him back, put the acid on. The old pony, uh, mate, never in town, eh? Uh, it was sensational. <laughs> now, I was yeah. going to say, what did you have to do with all of that, Neil? What did you have to do with that whole plan? That's a bloody coincidence, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I, <just happened. laughs> oh, I got I got the old scrapbook out from the uh, Green Edge days, and I did a bit of a copy and paste, and um, it all turned out okay. So, um, <laughs> no, the truth is, we had a bit of a plan organised. Uh, the, the, the plan that started a couple of days ago, a few days ago, when we knew we had to have uh, a lot of firepower in the last half of the race, you know, and. Um, Ideally, if we had someone up the road, that'd be better. But uh, we we tr we really tried to save energy over the last few days wherever we could, and um and and I just said to the guys, look, today is going to be a crucial day. Today, there's going to be big changes in the GC. I don't know which side we're going to be on, but we've got to go out and be, be uh, proactive. And so it was just about more about getting the culture going, uh, getting the boys ready to take advantage of any ideas, any any situations that arose. And so probably the secret was when that situation did arise. Uh, dominate on it quickly, getting boys on the front, stop the guy at the front like we did a few years ago with uh, with the Stemmer, and uh, then, then yeah, we, we saw how it panned out. If he, it was yeah, look, sensational, mate. I mean, you I mean, couldn't have uh, you couldn't have scripted it better if you tried. But when it split, like with that fifty k out, when when uh, you guys got that gap on, Lo on Lopez, and then no one would help but help him. He, he was sitting there. Benal had decided. He didn't care, so he just let it go. And it stayed at about 20 seconds, 30 seconds for a while, and Jack was having to jump in and help. That was when it was a real smart move to, to get uh, the other guy back from the break because that was really crucial. Yeah, that, that's it. That, that, was the, uh, that was the moment yeah. where, where we sort of said straight away, Jack, even you get in, ride flat out, and then we'll see a 15 seconds, 15 seconds, and there was a moment when it almost looked like it was going to come back. And then when it grew out to 30 seconds, 45 seconds, that's when I chucked Jack off the front again and just left Gino on the front because uh, we all we all knew that uh, later on in the day, Adam Yates was going to start attacking us again. But, uh, yeah, but that those that five kilometres or so was crucial. Well, it sounds like what's crucial is your ability to, as you said, to think stages ahead and, and not cook your biscuits. And you gave us that analogy of $5 in the bank and, Looks like you guys went to the candy bar yesterday, Sheriff. <laughs> and what about what about yeah. Madur, Neil? What about Madur? It, I mean, the white jersey. Yes, it wasn't so important to uh, to Aegon Bernal, but this must have been an unbelievable dream realised because the kid could never have thought he'd finish up in white. Yeah, Gino's been fantastic, and as you've seen in all the big mountain stages, and that was. That was the main reason, you know, like stopping the guy out in the front yesterday was was about trying to make sure that Jack was was his uh, podium place was uh, well guaranteed. But a, a large section of that uh, was for Gino to make sure that he would get up in the top five, to make sure he'd get the white jersey, um, and so that was that was a bit about paying back a bit of a favour to him as well for the for the work he's done over the last last few days and Gino I, I said it a few months ago to it, it, one of our staff meetings I said he's a very very talented rider if we can just get him to believe in himself a little bit uh he's been really calm throughout this welter I think probably because he's in the shadow of Jack uh but he's been able to get through this really well he's nice and calm uh he's never asked for anything and look at that he's in, in a white jersey uh mm. fifth overall and um it's it's he's, he's starting to enjoy the, the moment yeah yeah, and so well, just we, we, while we've got a bit of silence here, now with your Spanish nationality hat on, uh, Neil, tell me what the Spanish are saying about the fact they haven't won a stage of this race yet. And if they don't win today, which is highly improbable, um, they won't have won a stage for 25 years. It's never been a dearth of, of results for 25 years. 
What are the you Spanish get, press saying? You might get another trolley bag knocked off, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I've got to take my Basque hat off before I put my Spanish one back on again. Like, of course, I'm indeed. <laughs> yeah, but um, there was there was actually two dramas uh, unfolding in the uh, in the Vuelta. There was uh, there was the fact that, there, that no Spaniard had won, and there was a, the fact that no that a Movistar hadn't won a stage in any of the Grand Tours up until now. Lopez, before his exit yesterday, he uh, he took a stage out the other day, but that, that was sort of one of the one of the uh, monkeys off their back. But now with the the, the Spanish not winning a stage. Um, it is a bit of a it's a, it's a it's a bit a little bit embarrassing. Uh, Enric Mas is going great here. He's going to be on the podium, but yeah, the, the stage win itself that hasn't come about, and and it is a bit of a uh, bit of a uh, bit of a sore point to talk to bring the, up with the Spanish people. <laughs> and they haven't won, they haven't won a stage in a Grand Tour this year either. Not, uh, they didn't win a stage at uh, the, the Giro or the Tour, so uh, uh, not good for Spanish cycling. There you go. But you have to we worry to, about that. It's not, we it's not used to talk like this with, with the UK <laughs> riders. We used to have these records set quite often, but now we we do win the odd stage. Hey, I, I, I was just going to say, say, Neil, I know, I know you don't have any credit cards on you, but are you uh, going to buy a six pack for Julian Dean for that little pulling effort from Nick Schultz? Ah, uh, Nick, what a ripper, eh? I um, I, we had Mark Padoon on the front at the, that stage, and then and we we picked up Nick, and I didn't I didn't say anything to him. I just looked up, and there he was swapping a couple of turns. I was like, that's bloody beautiful, you know. Like yeah. I don't know whether he's started out going to Jack or he just got on and did a couple of turns off his own bat. But bloody good on him, you know. And uh, it's good to see Nick's Nick's a bloody good bike rider. He's a he's a good lad. Uh, and there you go. He's just come in and got, done a couple of turns for a mate yesterday as well. Hmm. I was uh, really surprised in, the, in that last 4K, which was enormous, you know, with, with what was going on. But, but they kept easing and then the, uh, different riders would get back on. But it surprised me that Adam Yates, a couple of times, he opened up quite a good gap. It got to sort of 30 or 40 metres uh, uh, back to Jack. And then he would, the, the others would get to him, he would sit up. I just thought, gee, that's strange. I mean, he only had to keep it going a little bit. Jack was in a bit of trouble, but he, he didn't care. Obviously, it was at the at his limit, but uh, that surprised me. Yeah, yeah. I, well, it surprised me in a nice sort of way, really. Jack, uh, he's he was never, never really in. He was, yeah, he was obviously uncomfortable. He was never really on the limit, you know. So he, each little pinch, I was telling him how long those pinches were, whether two hundred meters or three hundred meters, and he was just just going over the, to, to try to get under the, the flatter sections with a bit of energy. I don't. Re I wasn't really working. That, wasn't really watching Adam as such, but making sure with that we paced ourselves through that section. But like I said, I was really obsessed with Adam. Uh, I started talking about Adam with Jack uh, about thirty kilometres to go, and um, and that was a, a, the objective was to to not lose too much time, if at all. And we lost four seconds in the finishing line. So down now, we're a minute down. Uh, we're a minute up. Sorry, uh, I've just been out and recon the the circuit. Jack's going to turn up the bus here in a minute, and uh, we're going to go and ride the circuit as well. But um, yeah, it's it's a it's not a bad time trial for Jack. It's uh, it's certainly not a bad time trial for Adam as well. But um, I think we're going to, I think we might go okay. Hey, yeah, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's that's uh, from a there's, grit. <laughs> there's not a lot of difference between them uh, in, in time trials. If you go back uh, through the history. Adam sort of got his act together a bit in the last 12 months, no doubt about that. But you would think if they're both uh, on uh, on song, you would think uh, Adam might only take 20 or 30 seconds. I hope. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. It's it's funny if you look at the if you look at the data on both of them, it's not you, you can't really base yourself too much on it because Adam, as uh, his time trial has improved over the last 12 months, um, but also Jack. Uh, hasn't got that many time trial results because he's always been w working for his teammates up until now. He, this year he has stepped it up. He's done uh, just recently in the Dauphiné. He did a decent time trial. In fact, the the, the time trial at the start of this race, uh, there was only one second between them. <laughs> uh, right. So there you go. I reckon it's. I reckon this the the start the first ten kilometres or so might favour Adam a little bit more, and I think the the second half of the, the time trial might. Over Jack. So anyway, let's see how it pans out. Got a couple of uh, live comments coming in. Wendy Superfan, fingers crossed for Jack to stay on the podium. Gary Tilly says, well done, Steve-O. I'm sure there's been plenty of planning behind the scenes. Just to give people an insight, I mean, how much planning goes into a campaign like this one? 
yeah planning like it starts it starts well as you know uh the, the route comes out uh in january i generally start getting in my car yeah you know, like not long after that i'm on the phone to my mate because he's, he's one of the race organizers we, I go around looking at different roads and that sort of stuff all through the the year. I've got my little me son. He comes with me sometimes, and we we uh, share a couple of kilometres along the way. And um, and then that's when I start to formulate plans, start to work out where we can spend energy, where we might be able to save energy. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's basically a, a nine or ten month uh, build up, and then obviously we have to be able to adjust uh, as we get closer to that. But like. Even right now, last night over dinner, uh, I gave a toast to the to the workers of the team, the masseurs, the, the coaches and so forth. And I said, look, everything fell into place today, but it, it's not over yet. We've got a really hard day tomorrow. Time trial's on. Uh, we've got to really just make sure we're really focused because we, we've got to help our riders be focused as well. This morning at 7.30, our staff were up and about, loading cars, pumping tyres and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, the race finishes tonight. It's a... Uh, a good almost a year of uh, building up to this. So when you see things fall into place, it's not it's not actually that easy. Uh, Matthew says, "Hi boys, so impressed with uh, Team Bahrain Victorious working as a team to help Jack. It's great to see him reaching his potential." We talked about this the other day, Neil, but it must give you a really good feeling knowing that you've seen a rider like Jack through the Green Edge days, and knowing that you know you've played a big role, obviously with the Vuelta, but knowing that you know the development, you know the excitement looking forward to the future as well yeah i think it's the same with anyone yeah and and you guys would be the same you know you guys you know, haven't been involved in the, the sporting part of it but you've been involved you, you know jack and you know what he's been through you know like i said we just mentioned a minute ago uh, nick how his past has gone through and it's, it's bloody lovely to be able to 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 know that, that what's what they've gone through and actually to, to be part of it's even more special and um yeah so jack Jack, having him, when I knew that I was coming to this team and I knew Jack was coming to this team, uh, that made it very special. And, and the fact that we can co- coincide in the races and, and maybe have my little bit of whatever I've done to, to assist in the result that he's getting here, well, that's fantastic. But um, it is. It's really, really fulfilling to watch a, one of a, a guy that we've known for years uh, to start to, to go on. And I, and I tend to think we've got – this is just the start of it. Uh, he's only 27, so um, – it's it's really it's really nice and really fulfilling. Couple more yeah, bang through. Fun. Carolyn says, "Love the sheriff." Zippy says, "Welcome to the sheriff of fruit and oats." Always <laughs> great to see you on the show. Congrats with how things are going. Um, and obviously, you've just answered. Stuart McIntosh says, "How does Neil find him with Jack Hague? He seems like an easygoing character. He's like that off the bike as well, isn't he, Neil?" Yeah. Yes. I think uh, we were actually talking about it with the staff last night. Um, We've all got our moments, yeah. Where there's a bit of stress, you know, like you, yeah, like I, yeah. When my radio doesn't work, I get a bit stressed out with people as well. But uh, uh, you know, we, 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 Jack, yeah. There's fiery moments and that sort of stuff. And he, but he, Jack's always the first one to come back later. If if he's lost his cool, sorry about that, you know, fellas, and 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 just calms things down. He's very appreciative of his workmates, his uh, his teammates. He's always, you know, thanks and you know, please and that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, he is is quite an easy guy to work with as well. And yeah, but, yeah, it's like I say, it's 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 all testing. Everything's testing over a three week bike race. But at the end of the day, uh, yeah, the, the the results are on the board. Now I was going to say, uh, Bahrain victorious are sort of getting pretty victorious everywhere. Uh, ben Lux tour uh, last night. You got uh, one, two, Sonny Corbrelli and uh, Mate uh, Mahonik. Uh, one two in the stage, and then they're one two on, on GC with a, with a great uh, finale uh, up the four times up the the Mur, uh, today. Should be exciting, but uh, brilliant for for the team, mate. Yeah, I, I sort of heard about that in in the race car. I wasn't really spending that much paying that much attention, but in the conversations over dinner last night, we heard about where the boys are going there. They've got a really complicated day there today, but. Um, yeah, it's, I think it was we, we touched on this subject the other day. When the when the race results are coming in, it's sometimes quite often to keep on the you know keep on going that way. And sometimes when there's a bit of a dry patch for results, and you and they actually need the results, you know, uh, that's when they don't turn up. And so uh, we're on a, we're on song at the moment. But um, uh, I think it's maybe in my character a bit. When when you're on song, when things are going good, I start to to already start to plan the the dry periods and and try to work out. How we can uh, keep on getting the odd victory every now and again. 
last one for me, Sheriff, is you've obviously come to a new team at the start of the year and now you're at the back end of the year and you're seeing some fantastic results. How much have you seen the culture sort of shift within that team uh, and bring across the, the the toolkit that you've learned over your, over your years' experience? That's that's exactly you've hit it on the hit the head on the the nail on the head. I was going to say it that way around again. <laughs> hit the head on the nail. <laughs> head on the nail, buddy. Yeah, boom. Yeah. But um, the uh, yeah, the culture. That's that's a that's a big thing, and that's I think that's part of the the spirit that I try to bring into the team. I don't know how much, how successful I am, but just to try to get the boys to calm down, just, just to try to think about. What their effect on on each other has. Uh, yesterday, I was talk- they, well, the the other director in the team sort of presented the stage how we're going to do things, and and then uh, he said you, he said to one of the riders, your role is the key role, and I come in and I said I said well actually every role is the key role, you know like he said the first guy that doesn't do his job, the second mm-hmm. guy can't do his job well, and then the third guy can't do his job well. So every role from the first from the guy that's pumping the tyres to the to the like the taxi in the bed at night's the key role, and um, and it's just about that. It's about mutual respect. It's about about honesty. It's about trying to give you all for your mates. And that's what I, I said to him yesterday morning. Let's not finish today's stage with any doubts. Uh, and let's make sure that we give our all for our teammates. And that's what they did. If he, no, it's been sensational, mate. Um, I just want to uh, make sure you, you, you whisper in Jack's ear that uh, I've got money on him today, so no pressure. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> no, well, Peter, Peter said if he can bling win the TT, <laughs> pick bling fourteen stages. Uh, I have not. You guys love to uh, stir a bit of shit, but uh, no, bling won't be winning the TT today. Bling uh, uh, has got, lost a bit of his shine in the last few days. I don't think. Uh, you would be worrying too much about that. I can't see anyone beating uh, Roglic today, but he's been going deep. Uh, and, and might be someone who, one of the good time trials, who's had a, a, an easier couple of days. So it'll be interesting to watch. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, bloody awesome having you on the uh, potty, Sheriff. The fans have definitely loved it and they've got behind it, but we're, we're super proud of everything you guys have achieved this month, mate. It's been fantastic. All right. Is thanks, it fellas. Imagine, Neil, is it what you so, imagine might happen? Is what, what was your sort of ambitions and targets for the team before you started? Is this a good result? Well, it's obviously a good result, but is it what you'd hoped for? Uh, this is probably better than what we'd hoped for. Um, it's, it's, a fu- it's a bit of an interesting question, actually. We were hoping for a podium finish with Lander, and so that, that's where the story started. Um, uh, I was also hoping to finish the race with my computer and my tablet, but anyway, I didn't. <laughs> but, uh, the, um, the, the fact was that when Jack started the race, he actually only just scraped into the team because of his injury. Uh, then he, uh, he got into the race as a worker, and then when things weren't quite go working out well with Lander, I thought, oh, let's try to get Jack into the top 10, maybe top five. And um, and then so our ambitions and hopes was that the start of the race was with a podium finish with Lander. It's ended up being it's a, with a different rider uh, and, and and different results. Not only have we got you know, hopefully Jack's riding his way to a, his uh, first podium finish in a Grand Tour. Uh, Gino Matter, as you said, fifth uh, overall, uh, leading young rider, and we we pretty well guaranteed winning the, the uh, team's classification as well. And so That's far and above any, any expectations, yeah. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Uh, yeah. Nice mate. Bloody Brilliant, awesome, bud. As yeah. you said, we appreciate you coming on the detour, Sheriff. Hope okay, you good on you, bud. that knock your stuff off. <laughs> See you, bud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for catching up. Good Have a good day, day mate. See you, mate. Okay, bye. Neil Stevens, absolute legend, always a laugh. Um, there was we obviously could have asked him about you know what happened with Lopez and that, but it's obviously another team. So what sort of insight yeah. he's going to give us? Um, Dale yeah. says, any talk of a New Jersey oh. classification of the world for the best abandonment? <laughs> <laughs> Way down for zero on that one. But that that was interesting yeah, yeah. because like Phil, in your time, you've obviously called so many Grand Tours. I mean, he's a guy that is going to finish in the top ten, which is nothing to sneeze at. And his head absolutely falls off and there's a blow up. I mean, what, what did you make of all of that? Well, I'd like to know a lot more to it than this. Um, mm. something, something must have gone on there. He may have had a spit with Bernal. Bernal sort of was prepared to sacrifice his ride with him. Um, or he may have had some sort of a mental blockage. There's, the, the story will come out. You don't just stop 
mm. like that when you're sitting. Uh, he, yeah, he was not going to obviously be third by the time he got to the finish. The gap was building. Yeah, but uh, Bernal only um, dropped one place uh, despite that. So it was a mistake by Lopez for sure. Well, evidently, reading all the, you know, the, the scuttlebutt that's on the different websites, he's, was, he had a big blue with his team boss, who's DS. That's, yeah. what, the, that's what he got upset about. His DS, he said, told him not to chase right at that crucial time. Uh, yeah, when the gap was only I, like 15 I, seconds. As I've said, I'm not a writer, but at certain points, you just got to tell your DS to get stuffed. No, no. You, but they don't, <laughs> but they, they don't well, do that. They don't do that. So the thing well, is, he, he's, getting, he's getting the tactics. So DS has made a thing. Yeah, thanks that, for your advice, mate, mate. Thanks for your advice. Get stuffed. I'm chasing. Yeah, well, do? Rip your, rip your ear, that's my down. responsibility. I, I, I'm trying to tell you what he said, why he was done. Yeah, well, so, <laughs> nah, it's his fault. But on. Um, but he's just signed a new contract with Movistar, so he's he's committed for next year now oh, for Movistar, be and here he is falling out with his DS if that's the case. Yeah. So um, it's going to be a rocky ride for a few weeks, and he's got to sort it all out. Yeah, he's like, they're, yeah. they're only stage winner in the race, so I suppose they're going to. Uh, but uh, oh, yeah, it's just it's just I couldn't believe I saw it happening. I was watching it live, and I thought, this yeah, this well, is why wouldn't you want him to chase? John. Yeah. Well, because we there was a, there were, no, no, because the gap was there, right? Yes. It was only about 15 seconds. Banal sitting on. I think he was trying to f force Banal through. He's forced through. Because, no, stop chasing. Banal put some pressure on Banal. Then they, when they suddenly realized, oh, hang on, Banal's not going to. Well, then he starts to chase. But it went from 15 seconds to 30 seconds. And no one else chasing. It was too late then. It was never going to happen. And uh, uh, it should have been an instant reaction the minute mm -hmm. Jack Hay and the other leaders went to that front group. Instant reaction. You don't let the men ahead of you like that. I'm just no. behind you. Escape. Yeah. It was a big mistake. Pushkar's got a question. He says, in such tactical battles, how does the DS take a decision whether to chase or not, who to follow, uh, etc.? We have a holistic picture on TV, but they're driving cars and serving bottles. Well, they have, they do though. They do make those decisions. They totally. they, they are they're watching exactly the same television that we're watching in the and, car, in the car, and they're on, on the radio. So he sees that gap. He sees that uh, uh, Bernal's just sitting behind him. Not doing, so he says, "No, stop chasing." He's going to. I'm just surmising why yeah. he, he would say. Okay, not to okay. Chase. I, I got I got something <laughs> to pose to Phil. Right in every other sport in the world, Phil. Soccer, basketball, AFL, football, whatever. If the team are going no good, who gets sacked? The coach. The if manager. A cycling team, the manager. If a cycling team doesn't perform, <laughs> how often do you hear DSs going, hey, mate, it's on your head. We've got to get rid of you. They, it's, it's weird. It's a yeah. weird sport well, for that. What is that? I'm very much against race radios, full stop. Always have been. Um, I like to think the riders aren't robots, but they're there to ride for themselves. I know for the DS talking to the riders, he's living the part. And as you could see from the conversation with Neil, um, he's part of the whole thing. And, you know, they, they do the plans the night before in the car. He's going to help them as bet he can. And he's he obviously almost talked Jack up that final climb, uh, keeping him making the effort only when it mattered. That's the other way to look at it. But for me, I like the bike riders to make the calls out on the race. And, um, and Lopez didn't make any call. You don't let the guy sitting on your shoulders on the last real race day of the of the welter slip out of your sight. Now, Roglic never makes that mistake, ever. Mm. He goes with every move they make because he knows once they're out of sight and the elastic snapped, he's got no friends. He's not going to close that gap without a little help. He, he'll pace the whole field back, but they won't help him. Mm. So it, it was a pure mistake by Lopez for me. Yeah. And like you, I'd have had words to the uh, DS and just told him my radio's broken, mate. Didn't hear you. Well, I'll tell you and what. Get on with the chase. Also, a great ride by a couple of other Aussies in that stage, too. Chris Hamilton Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. A great yeah. ride for his sixth. Although our yeah. commentators did 
miss his number. <laughs> they were calling him Bernal for up at that oh, last yeah. climb for a little yeah. while. But really, oh, the bike. Hey, yeah, hey, but... hey. there's an unwritten rule. If they're mates, you just don't even mention mistakes, isn't that right, Phil? Like yeah, absolutely. Happened. Name and shame. And so, really no mates in the commentary game, mate. No <laughs> mates in the commentary game. <laughs> <laughs> Not these days. <laughs> no, I mean, it's easy to do. But um, yeah. but also, uh, uh, um, Michael Storer, fantastic ride. Uh, yeah. to, to, he's now got the uh, the polka dot jersey, uh, yeah. only the second Aussie to, to get a polka dot jersey in the Vuelta and only the third Aussie, I think, to get a, a polka dot jersey in a Grand Tour. So uh, absolutely brilliant. Uh, yeah, and well taken, so well taken. He wasn't a lucky king of the mountains on a one-day breakaway getting all the points. He went out on the hunt every day that it mattered. Uh, and and clearly Bardet was there to help him in the end, which was yeah. yeah. Should we mention two, the two stage stages. winner Iffy twenty five minutes in? Absolutely, <laughs> why not? First ever World Tour win, which was not mentioned on my television. I heard, uh, but that's his first ever bike race win, I mean, and yeah. wow. didn't look too gainly coming up the hill. But if I'd have been climbing that hill, I'd have looked a lot worse. But that was a very <laughs> steep finish. Uh, well, is that a youngster? Well, right. Uh, what a future, John! This kid's got. Yeah. Is he I French? Think he was, yeah. He was third. He's French. French. He's French. Clement. He, Clement. He, Clement. Yeah. Champoussin. Uh, Champoussin. 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 Very He's, um, similar facial expressions to another classic Frenchman. Uh, what's his name? On. Show uh, me the picture again. He had the yellow jersey in 2011. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, uh, what's his name? Vukla. Vukla. Oh, Thomas Vukla. Yeah. Yeah. When, when, when he went on the attack, he, he really just played it up. Not, not yeah. just a, spot on, Dan. Not just the facial expressions, but all over the bike. Vukla was exactly yeah. the same. <laughs> all over the bike. But, gee, it TV. was a good ride. It was the perfect timing. Um, and yeah. uh, he's only like, 23. And the, he, the way he was thumping his chest up across the line, where it was really, yeah, he, he, he was pumped. It was fantastic. Well, really he's been good. a pro yeah. since he was a teenager too. I mean, this kid's just now burst through big time. He's only ever been with AG Tour in his whole, uh, whole question there for, for, for yeah. Stewie. Uh, so um, the other Aussies, two of our King of the Mountain jerseys. So we Simon had Clark. Uh, si Simon Clark for Green Edge. Oh, in Steve, the, uh, if he, uh, Steve -O got up him early on. We're not, yes, not yes. going to be defending this jersey, mate. And yeah. when he got it, he goes, oh, I never doubted you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Maddie, Maddie Lord in the Giro. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I tell you what we're gonna do, fellas. We're gonna have a quick drinks break, and I want to bring in a guy who's not afraid to get the one wood out, and I want to ask him about Lopez. I just hope he doesn't drop an f bomb. That's of course for McBilly. Uh, he's gonna give us an update with uh, what's happening with the jerseys, and if he, you're gonna give us the results of the loudest silent auction, the Amilla Maldives mm. Resort. Well, so, they've still uh, got half an hour. They've still got half an hour to. to uh, I've got my. Uh, my phone here taking emails. So, Jerry, uh, if I'll you're watching, <laughs> get, get ready. All right, we'll have a quick break uh, and we'll come back afterwards and, and wrap things up and, yeah, announce the winners and get Vaughn's one wood out. I'm looking forward to it. Look at this bike. You think it's just a bike, right? But it's not. <clears throat> it's a bike. 374 people are looking at. This guy, this girl, them all looking at it people from here there and wherever this is people that are looking for a bike or just a piece of it amateurs semi-amateurs and pro amateurs this guy wants this bike but with this crank and these bars this could be the perfect match but not this one this girl has a bike to sell and thousands of people might purchase it eyes on bikes help grow small businesses his hers yours and the latest data and insights help those businesses keep moving we are the world's number one bike marketplace with over 500,000 products and 900 brands where buyers and sellers are brought together in a place where a bike is never just a bike bike exchange where the world buys sells learns and rides Life is like a two-way street. It's about consideration and mutual respect. Roads are much the same. However you get around, walk, ride or drive, if we share our roads, we can all be safer. The Amy Gillett Foundation is Australia's peak cycling safety charity. Our mission is for safe cycling in Australia. Our vision 
is for zero cyclist deaths. Over the last year we've seen an enormous increase in people taking up cycling, whether it be for recreation, with the family, commuting or even to start your own cycling career. We need to do more to make it safer for every cyclist. 20 cyclists every day are hospitalised and one cyclist is killed every 10 days on Australian roads. So, the next time you jump on your bike or hop in your car, remember to practice the four C's. Be courteous, calm, considerate and conscientious. Every cyclist's death is preventable and we all deserve to get home safely. Please donate to help the Amy Gillett Foundation make the road safer for you and for me. Uh, thanks again to Bike Exchange. And, and I actually want to say a massive shout out to Bike Exchange because they've been partners of the show from day dot iffy. And we wouldn't have been able to do the show without those guys. And also uh, to the Amy Gillett Foundation, they're a very special partner because they've got great awareness campaigns and, and we'll be supporting those guys. Uh, in the future, now Vaughan McVilly has joined us, who's a board member for the Mental Wheels Foundation, mentalwheelsfoundation.org. Now, Vaughan, don't be afraid to get you one more out, but just be careful about the F-bombs. Uh, Lopez, <laughs> what's the thought? Right. Well, listen, I thought it was a piss-poor performance by him. It's, it's nearly as bad as Lander, like, nicking off after he wasn't going yeah. well and not, and not hanging around and have, like with the team. Like, he was, he was dealt a really hard deck of cards there and it was a really unfortunate situation that he ended up in and Bernal not to side of the chase and and that tactical battle but come on mate like seriously hang around like I thought it was absolutely ridiculous you're still going to get a top 10 in the grand tour like that's still going to be on your power like I was pretty yeah. angry uh with that uh with that I, he's gone way way down in my uh list of uh favorite riders and he was way way up there before that so piss mm. poor Dan yeah is it one of the worst you reckon you've seen Oh, it's up there. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. I've seen a few fights post post race that probably didn't need to happen. Uh, there was a couple of rippers a few years ago that were, were but yeah, like I thought. I, I also thought during the stage before he, he left though, like it was a gutsy performance. Like uh, he was laying it all on the line, um, trying to to chase back on his own while everyone was sitting on his wheels. At one stage, I, I honestly thought that he was going to, like, take off. He was, like, you know, had the old elbow for asking people to come around to do a turn. He was nearly flapping them so hard that he was going to take off. But, yeah, no one would do a turn for him. And I was actually loving him even more. But then to, to hear what happened, I was like, oh, mate, come on. Um, but what a stage. My oh, God, that was an amazing stage. Mm, oh. Amazing stage. Yep. Yeah. But, yeah. but oh, in, po in, in positive news, if he, we were talking to Neil about earlier, he's great to see, like, Aussies get around, like, when Nick Schultz was pulling a couple of those turns there oh. particularly at the back end of a grand tour like i remember when esteban was uh leading the giro and a few of the colombian riders said if esteban's there and i and i'm in a position to help him i'm going to do it like i don't care what team i'm on like there just seems to be this sort of um you know passion from wherever you come from to get around whoever's trying to get on the podium or or do, do well in it, GC. it's funny you, you mentioned that uh, dan because the, the colombians can, can be a little bit like the Aussies. You know, you, you don't see it a lot, lot with a lot of the other countries, for, you know, especially the European countries. They, the, the Italians on another team aren't going to help an Italian. But, uh, but the Spanish do it a little bit, we, they, as we know, with poor old Cadell. But, um, yeah, the, the, the uh, Colombians, uh, although uh, Bernal didn't do it. <laughs> there mm. were two Colombians yes, yesterday, last night, Bernal and, uh, and Lopez. But, anyway. Yeah, that is good to see. You're dead right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so what's the update with the kit, Vaughan? Uh, Apex Customs. Uh, we, we announced the, the winning jersey uh, design yesterday. Um, yep. But the word on the street is we need people to purchase these quick to get them in time for the Amy Gillett um, Grand Fondo. That's right, mate. We've already actually had uh, quite a few people jump on and already purchase, which is fantastic. So thank you very much. Uh, remembering all of the proceeds go to the Amy Gillett Foundation. Um, but you need to, do need to jump on there. It takes about three to four weeks 
uh, to, to produce clothing. Um, and the issue that we currently have is freight, uh, getting stuff uh, um, from overseas and in, into Australia at the moment with all the things going on with COVID. It's pushed our delivery time out to about 10 days, um, which is normally like three to four days. Uh, but, yeah, getting that through. So uh, we do need anyone who's actually doing the event, uh, we, we really would love to try and get your uh, orders in by Wednesday, Wednesday night at 6 p.m. The store's going to stay open. You're still going to be able to buy the kit um, going for all that. But if you want the kit for the event, try and jump online and order it by Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Good stuff, right. mate. Well, I, I, I didn't realise that because I've got a few mates who I see on on Tuesdays, right, who have said they're going, there's about six or seven of them, who are going to get the kit. So I'll have to put a bit of pressure on them and to get that order in by Wednesday. But if we can push it sort of a day or so, that would be be, be wonderful. But we'll do our best. Sure, um, we can do something, mate. Zippy says, now we're on the rabbit hole of worst abandonments in the Grand Tour. <laughs> Do you reckon Lopez abandon uh, was worse than our Ruse 2020 Tour de France abandoned? If similar. He... Similar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a Ruse uh, was all, a bit more oh, like Landers. Was, talk about weak as piss. That yeah, was that was right weak as piss. That's, but that's about not helping, not staying around and helping a mate. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just yeah. being selfish, but this one is a little bit different. This is crazy. This is, you know, he's going to finish, even if he just stays with uh, Bernal, he's going to finish fifth. He's still going yeah. to finish top five. He's only going to drop a couple of spots, but he just he he just lost it. And when he abandoned, you know, it, there's pictures of him getting into the car, and he's already on the phone as he slams the door of the car. He sits down. He's on the phone already. I'd like to know who he was talking to. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, Another he was talking team. to his no, he's talking to his uh, daughter and his missus and stuff. They, they was came he? out and yeah, his old man did an oh, okay. interview. So, his father-in-law, he's actually his father. Father-in-law father is an ex-pro, yeah, and he was uh, uh, he was getting oh. stuck into the uh, DS for, for causing all. Yeah, the but problems. but even that, even that, you're a professional athlete, right? Take responsibility. You, you pull out of a yeah. race. You get, get on the phone I, and go, oh, piss me off. I'm pulling out. Like, come on, mate. <laughs> Like really? <laughs> you know what I mean? uh, the, this is the Aussies in full cry. I love this. Uh, <laughs> it's say yeah, twenty one, Phil. He only get, he only he only gets about two and a half million dollars a year or something like that. So yeah, 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 that's right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, sure, Pete. Look, you maybe. never know. You never know what's going inside somebody's head, though. You know, like we're also supposed to be about moment. mental health and looking after oh, no, uh, uh, the athletes. So yeah, no. you know, we we should and, uh, wait till we I hear know. the full story. Uh, but I, until we hear the full story, <laughs> week is piss. <laughs> <laughs> you, no, that's it. Oh, I feel bad now that you've raised that because I've just said, you know, <laughs> harden up and told people, call out dickheads and all that. And then here I am getting on the. Oh, it, 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 <laughs> it, 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 I'll just say it's different for athletes in the middle of the race. After that, different. Support them. But in the heat of the moment, week is piss. Peter Wooms, uh, Schultz <laughs> could have also been riding to help Yates if he is ex bike exchange teammate. So it's a double-edged oh. sword there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure, sure, well, exactly, exactly. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, no, it, it, but, but Yates wasn't really worrying about uh, um, doing turns right there at the moment. It was about, uh, it, it was uh, um, Jack who needed the help and, it, and he helped right at the right time. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Samantha made a good point because we often forget about the sprinters because Jakobsen needs to take the green jersey. I loved how the, the Kenny quick step team guided Jakobsen across the finish line, literally across the road. Yeah, so he's, he, 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 he struggled the last couple of days. It was one day uh, he made the time cut by two and a half minutes. That's that's cutting it very close with the whole team riding together. And, and But he was really struggled the last couple of days. Yeah. But, uh, hey, he deserves the green jersey. He's the best sprinter here. So, uh, yeah, good on him. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Now, um, talking about the time trial, is there anything else uncovered? We haven't uncovered if you from stage twenty. No, no, not really. I mean, no. it's it's it's, uh, it's it's an interesting. Uh, it's thirty three k, thirty three k, which is a. Um, no, I, I was talking 30, about 20? yesterday's stage. That's no. stage twenty. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. Um, <laughs> oh no, I think look. What, we, what, we can move on. Uh, talk about time trial. <laughs> it was a great stage yesterday. Yeah. I, uh, a couple of things that surprised me. I did 
I did wonder when uh, the South African uh, um, guy jumped away, a fantastic ride, actually. Ryan Gibbons uh, is a very Ryan good rider. Gibbons. Mm. Yeah, very good bike rider, yeah. Uh, and, and it was a really uh, uh, inspiring effort. But I, I was surprised that um, Michael Storer and, and Roman Bardet didn't react quicker when the gap was only about 30 seconds. It just get going and, and join him, you know. They had a chance, a really good chance to, to win the stage, I, I thought. But obviously they were, they'd spent uh, uh, a few pennies as well because uh, uh, Gibbons rode out to you know, a minute and a half, which, yeah, on a descent. It wasn't like he got away on the climb, on, on the descent. Mm. Uh, so who's your predictions for the stage today? Obviously Roglic, if he, do you think, do, do you, oh, I mean, let's talk about the biggest question. Jack Hay, can he hold on to third? Will Yates I make so. up a minute? No, I don't think he will. I, I, I think that, that there's not a lot between them as the, the, the prologue, one second between them. Um, at the end of a Grand Tour, it's not who – if this was a, a 30K time trial at any time of the year, I would say there'd only be 10 or 15 seconds between them. That's mm. where they are. At the yeah. end of a Grand Tour, it's whoever's got the most money in the bank. And I don't think yeah. they, I don't think either of them have got much money in the bank. You could see in that last few climbs, uh, last few kilometres of that climb yesterday, Adam was you know, giving in everything and dropping him on the steepest climbs, which he always does, but Jack was coming back. So mm. to me it shows that they, there's nothing much between them. So I think it's going to be a very, very good race. And I, I, I think uh, Jack will keep it by you know, about 40 seconds. Yeah. Well, it's a possibility. Um don't forget, in it's a 40-minute time trial, really, and to pull back a minute in 40 minutes is going to be very, very hard to do. But to balance that, Greg LeMond did a 28-kilometre time trial in 1989 and pulled back 58 seconds to win the he Tour. Che he eight. cheated. He cheated. According to John Tavaro, he cheated, but of course he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, he had the, he had the, uh, the, the bars. The boom, no, one else, yes. no one else knew about him. Within the regulations, one-piece metal. Of course, Poor old Lauren Fignon strapped his on no, and, no and got, wasn't them. allowed to use him. So yeah. it, it, it's unusual for the French to fight against their own and let the American win, but still. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Carolyn Harvick But the way Neil that... Stevens was talking, though, in fairness, Neil, oh, he's confident. Neil, he thinks it's we're, a done deal, and I hope he's right. When Neil says at the end, we're going all right, hey, I know him really well. That means <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. He's done all the numbers. He's crunched it. He knows the course. He's prepared everything. Like I remember one year, I think I mentioned on the show earlier, he knew that there was going to be five minute, uh, five minute drive from where the buses were to where the uh, start was. Uh, so he had to take rollers for Esteban, and it was a sharp time trial. So he had all that plan because he'd done the recon like three months earlier. Every other team, no one else had rollers, and Esteban rode a time trial out of his life. Because he was at on the rollers before the start. A lot of these other riders, you know, they didn't do it. So they all had the lactic acid and their timings were out. It's all those little one percenters. And that's why when he was saying about the nine-month prep that goes into a, a grand tour, it's huge. And also, like, obviously, I know Neil really well. It was a different culture when he first rolled in. He was a bit like, oh, hang on. What's going on here? There's, there's a few things I need to sort of you know, try and mould a bit. And that has had a huge effect because of that whole, like that, when he was answering about that um, other DS saying, hey, you know, you, you got the biggest role today. So, oh, hang on. That was an evolution with Neil. And we were talking about that the other day, Ify, about how when he first started with Green Edge, he was very much, this is what I say, this is what you do, and that's it, old school. And then he had to change because it just wasn't working with the younger guys. I remember going to a time trial at the Giro in 2013 and they did the recon and the riders, Neil had a plan and the riders said, Neil, we've done the course. It's it's not working like that. We need to change it. He goes, nah, this will plan. That's it. And that just doesn't work. And he had to be sort of said, hey, mate, you need to change. And when I saw him in 2016 and, and I've talked about a few times, his ability to treat riders and staff as shareholders, every single person, that to me was the game changer. That was the bar moving forward. And you see it in the results. And we constantly yeah. talk about culture on this show and you talk about teams where it's starting to fracture and people want to leave and all this sort of stuff. That's the fundamentals. You know, every person in that organisation yeah. has a role to play and, and they do it. And I think yeah. Neil's going to have a massive influence on Bahrain, particularly next year and beyond, 
So when you see results for Jack, it's it's bloody exciting. Hey, Dave makes a good point just quickly. Uh, he says, good call on the mental health stuff with Lopez. He spoke before about the pressure of being a leader and considered some uh, like a Tom Dumoulin. The language barrier makes it harder to know what's going on for the non-English speakers too. That is a great point. I'm going to stop saying he's soft and it was weak as piss, all this sort of stuff. It's true. It's true. I, I think logically when you do something like that, there's something else at play and we do keep banging on about this and the current climate. It'll all play out. But um, if there is sort of mental health issues, then, uh, yeah, he obviously needs support. Now, Vaughan's back. You had internet issues, Vaughan? Sorry, lads. Hello, no, crash. <laughs> Uh, and last one, John Bodie says, Jack looks stuffed last night. Adam looks fresher. I think Adam will gain time on Jack. But if he, it, looking at Neil, he's crunched the numbers, does, I don't think it's going to be a minute. No, I, I, look, you've got to remember, on those really steep climbs, Adam, they suit uh, Adam Yates to a T. And whereas Jack Haig is a much bigger guy, that doesn't suit him. The minute... The gradient changed, he would come back. So, as as uh, Neil Stevens said, his number he wasn't stuffed. He, that that's just the way you can ride those steep climbs. Ja uh, Neil was telling him to back off a little bit on that steepest part and coming back. So he was riding to a plan. So mm. I, I think he'd be fine. I, yeah. I think Adam, I think Adam probably will beat him in the time trial, but not by a minute. Yeah. Yeah, and don't forget that Adam has been there before on the podium. Jack has never been there. He's going to come out in such a mental state of mind to succeed. Mm. He'd be very. He will. I think he'll lose about twenty seconds. I'm guessing, of course. Mm. But I, has, I reckon ha, he's going to be. The has man. has Adam been on the podium in a Grand Tour? He's been fourth in the Tour de France. Mm. I don't know. Oh, has he been be on right. the podium? I'll, I'll let you know. Simon's won a Grand seconds. Tour. Simon's been on the podium and won a Grand Tour, but I don't. Yeah, sure I don't think he has. has. Oh yes. No, no. Well, before we announce the winner of the silent auction, if he for the Miller Resorts. Let's play a quick promo to get behind why we're doing it. And that's obviously the Correcca Foundation for Phil's African Safari. Hi everyone, it's Phil Liggett here and it's time to get my African Safari on the road again. We're heading back to the Correcca Game Reserve in the Eastern Cape of South Africa, where animals including the rhino roam freely. We did four great rides in June and now with two new ones that were set to go again. There will be eminent guests to answer your questions on the wildlife and also offer an opportunity to win amazing trips to Kareka. We'll chat to one another and you don't even have to ride thanks to Full Gaz who will set you up to watch on Zoom when you enrol and make a donation. We have four rides, one per month starting on September 19. They last an hour and if you have a smart trainer you can pedal your way through the reserve or you can just sit back with a cup of tea. In either case, knowing that your participation is helping keep the animals safe and free to roam. Come and join me, and all the information you need to have is at careca.co.za slash peloton, and let's go. Fantastic uh, promotion there, and get behind Phil's uh, African Safari Peloton, uh, and head along to the Careca website. Now, Ify, uh, I'll play the promo before you announce the winner. Have uh, you got your script? For the final time, your amended <laughs> script. I have. I have. Located okay, just a 30 minute seaplane flight from Malay, Amila Meldives Resort and residents sit over the crystalline waters of Bar Atoll UNESCO World Biosphere. It's one of the largest islands in the Maldives. Amila has sample, ample space for some of the largest luxury overwater beach pool villas and residences in the country. With leafy cycle tracks, Secret beaches, Amila is shorter to exceed your expectations. Perfect. And uh, it does look off. nice, doesn't it? It's been a big build. It looks up, fantastic. John. Yeah. What's the final bid? Me and John are going. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a stitch up, folks. It's John and Phil. <laughs> they 10, 10 grand each. It's all done. So, uh, um, We've our top of it was seven thousand five hundred dollars, but just for two. The, the, in the end, the, the Jason and the resort offered if four people wanted to go, they, they would have to pay at least ten. But no, it's for two people, so seven thousand five hundred dollars, which is fantastic. So, yeah, that's uh, great. Um, um, we will be that's in great. touch with with the winners and send them all through the information and put them uh, directly in touch with uh, Kaleka and the Meldives. So it'd be wonderful. Well, and I think. 
I don't often give you compliments, John. In fact, I'll give you a bugger all. But <laughs> it was your idea to do a silent auction because if we offered it just as a prize and a randomly give it away to people that, you know, donated money, I don't think it would have raised 7500 So chapeau to you for driving That's, that idea uh, as well, that, John. Uh, that is so good, John. Uh, if you send me the email of the people who bought it, I'd like to write them. And um, and also, Jason, thanks so much for your oh, generosity. Unbelievable. Um, mm. You've got us so close. You within a couple of thousand dollars now of our target, which was uh, in all all the fundraising we've done mostly with you guys, uh, thirty five thousand dollars. The target. And we're very close now. I need to check, but we're around about thirty two, I think, at the moment. Mm. So uh, unbelievable. Thank you for that. Yeah, no, nah, sensational. And it's as you said, it's a great cause, mate. So um, we're we're happy to get behind it and. Geez, knowing how creative we are, me and, me and John, we'll come up with some more ideas down the track, won't we? If you... <laughs> we will. We will. Yeah, we'll keep working on it. We're looking forward. No, we're only, it's only, uh, uh, what's that, a week or 10 days to your first uh, safari. Uh, I know. That's yeah. why I'm going out on the bike. As soon as I finish with the podcast, I'm going for a ride because I better get training. Well, well, I'll, get dro I'll get dropped for my own peloton. That's yeah. Where we'll we'll right. be there, mate. We'll be there. Final yeah. predictions, lads, for stage twenty-one time trial. I'll start with you, John. Ah, oh, yeah. Look, I'll go with uh, the rog, uh, rog Lich. I can't. Uh, um, mm. He's just. He seemed to have a fair bit of petrol left in the tank. He's the yep. world. He's the Olympic champion. Um, I, I just think he'd be too strong. Yeah, Phil. Well, what can I say? I've got to agree, John. Um, I looked down the list to see if there's anybody maybe from the bowels of the list going to turn in a great time trial, but they haven't got the drive now. Um, there's no Spanish rider can end the dearth of stage wins in this tour, I don't think, can win the time trial. I think I expect a good, a good time trial from Enrique Mass, but no, I can't see anybody beating Roglic at all. It's his course. It's not flat. He's, he'll use his strength as he climbs steadily up to the finish. Santiago de Compostela, and um, well, everything's on his side. This has been a religious race, don't forget. We started outside the big cathedral, and we're finishing in one of the most religious sanctuaries in Spain. And so I think uh, the gods are with him too. Good stuff. And Vaughan, going to go past the rog, mate? You got a curly for us? I, don't, I really don't think you can. Um, <clears throat> I like uh, Jackie Hague's big diesel, though, on this course, to be honest. I, I think he'll, he won't lose that much time to Yates. Um, Yates would have to actually have to pull out a huge ride. Um, he'd probably have to beat Roglic, I reckon, to, uh, to uh, get uh, past uh, Jackie. But, yeah, I don't think you can go past Roglic. He's just in another world at the moment. Mm, mm. Definitely. And you were right what you said because I checked it. Yates has only finished fourth in a grand tour. I get the two Yates confused, always have. John's, <laughs> very, John's very rarely yeah. wrong with his stats. They're so twins, no born 45 minutes apart. They come from Berry in Lancashire, which is where not far from where I was brought up. So they're Lancastrians, and yeah. um, and they're both great bike riders. So Yates does have something to okay, ride for okay. today as well. Yeah. Well, we and will... just to go back, you know, mm -hmm. that year he finished fourth. He got the white jersey. Um, he should have got all the podium. That, that was that was the year that the True. body won the K the K the K to go body inflatable came down right. I mean the timing of the unbelievable right down bang down he went, mm. and that that the seconds he lost there cost him uh, third place in the Grand Tour. So anyway, just a bit of yeah. information. Oh, well, by the way, uh, uh, Roglic now has won more leaders jerseys than Chris Froome, who held the record. Really? I think he was 51. Oh. I think he's on his 52nd leader's jersey in the Grand Tour today. There you go. Uh, oh. He's uh, setting it all up, isn't he? Yeah. Amazing. A bad for the junior world champion ski yeah. jumper. That's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's sensational. <laughs> who, who, well, he actually fell off and, and got out of the business in ski jumping. He keeps falling off in bike races, but thankfully, he doesn't hurt himself so much. Mm. So if he will be back live tomorrow night, 6.30, and we'll try and get Jack Hag on, yeah? Yeah, we want to. Yeah, yeah. If he doesn't answer, exactly. Doesn't answer, yeah, we'll, yeah. Try. we'll 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 uh, do our best to get Jack you've on. Got to get we'll, Jack, and uh, we'll get uh, uh, Phil. We'll get you to do a wrap up of the time trial. And I thought we'd have a really good chance. We'll we will look at. We we'll get um, Lindy on as well from Kureka. We'll send her. Yeah, a that'd note. be lovely. That'd yep. be lovely. 
if yeah, you if, you, if you don't reach her yeah. or have a problem, yeah. let me know. And I'll, I'm sure she'll be over the moon, Lindy, about what's happened this last three weeks. And yeah. Vaughan, you can put your thinking cap on. I'd like, we'd like to, uh, I know we're not all, they're all, not all Australians are out there watching our uh, uh, show and viewing our show, but uh, we, we do have an Australian sort of uh, uh, um, lineage. And I'd like to, we'll just have a look at the, uh, at the Aussies and, and give them all. Um, we're going to uh, do that tomorrow uh, night? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to pick. If you could pick all the Aussies in the country. Oh, no, 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 no. I wasn't doing that. No, 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 no. That's another show. We're just going to talk about the Aussies in this for Welter and we'll rate how they went. Now, that's a great show. Done. That's why people do call this thing chaos, because we do have production meetings at the end of the show. With everybody listening, of course. Yeah, with everyone listening. Yeah, that's right. I, so, I'd just like to send another another shout out, uh, uh, a mate of, of ours, uh, of all of ours, who, who's uh, uh, ex journo uh, now retired, uh, Peter Cogoy, uh, who always Cogs. watches the show. Cogs. Cogs. Yeah, uh, Cogoy. Yeah. Well, he's, uh, his lovely uh, partner, yeah. Deidre, who's not very well at the moment, but loves the show. just wanted to send uh, a shout out to, to yeah. Deidre. Uh, all the best, yes. Al. All the best. Absolutely. Yeah. And Cogsley sure. will appreciate that. Yeah. He's, uh, he's the one genuine Australian who's an absolute mine of information. Um, he's a should never retire from journalism. No, okay, I, I, look, I, I, and I, let me show you this. Are we ready to go now? Yeah, I want to show yeah, you no, bike. Yeah, 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 Can you see my bike? Look at that. Can you see it? Oh, oh mate. Yeah. I brought it bet, downstairs for the first time in I five weeks. Bet you didn't pay that. retail for that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't pay for it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> You're worse than Scotty. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I've, oh, I've, right. uh, yes, well, the thing is that... Um, What's it worth? To what what I could you resell it for? I'm, well, I would never sell it. It's, it's a generous <laughs> present, and I'm, I'm very, very pleased to ride it, I must say. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. How did, just finally, how did you score that for free? I can't remember. <laughs> well, I happen to know the... <laughs> The man who was in charge of Canyon, the CEO, uh, and he awesome. sent me sent me an email and said, "Would I like a bike?" Well, <laughs> what uh, do you think the answer was? Huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say, in fairness, Specialized had done the same, so they're at the other house. Okay. So. Oh, fantastic, mate! Uh, well, my, my last goodbye yeah. to saying to everyone is: don't forget, enter for for uh, Amy's uh, uh, Great Ocean Road Grand Fondo. If you're going to be around in Victoria, yeah, it's on Sunday, 24th of October. Um, you do the 130k, the 45k gravel Grand Fondo. You can do the media media ride from Apollo Bay down to Lawn, 45k, or is a 14k family bike ride. If you want to enter and get a detour kit. You can be part get of the D2 it. mob, and uh, Dan's going to be on the uh, e-bike on. and motor, motor paces all the way around. Yep. yep. Oh. Yep. Don't forget to order your so jerseys much. before Wednesday at 6 o'clock. That's right. That's right. Don't Absolutely. miss out. Pre pressure's and, on. Yeah. Bloody hell. Pressure's and on. And make sure Pressure's you on. go to apexcustomaus.com, yeah. get your jersey, get your kit, and we'll see you there. We'll see you yeah. also tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, and hopefully, fingers crossed, but after talking to the sheriff, it, it should be okay. Jack Haig is on the podium. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow, guys. Take it easy. It's going to be great. This is the winning one.